Hey guys, James MCD Productions here, and welcome to another LEGO Movie Review. This is a series I started back in February with the LEGO Batman movie, and now I'm doing another one for the LEGO Ninjago movie. Much like last time, this video will contain spoilers, so if you haven't seen the movie and don't want to be spoiled, then go see it because it's actually pretty good, and then come back and watch this video. But, for those of you who have seen the movie, don't care about spoilers, or just love listening to the sound of my voice, first of all, aw, oh, that's so sweet. And second, let's get right into the review. Your heroes on the way! The Lego Ninjago movie, directed by Charlie Bean, is yet another spin-off of the 2014 phenomenon, The Lego Movie. It is also the second LEGO movie to be released this year following the LEGO Batman movie back in February. I think it's fair to say that Ninjago is LEGO's most popular original IP. Ever since this line of sets appeared on store shelves back in 2011, it's been adapted into a Cartoon Network show, video games, and even a themed section in both Legoland Florida and Legoland California. So it only seemed fitting that after LEGO Batman gave Ben Affleck and the Super Friends a run for their money, that these six brick-kicking ninjas should get their own installment in the LEGO Cinematic Universe. But, would this film live up to the previous LEGO movies? Well, we're about to find out. Before we start, there's a few things I need to get out of the way. Before I saw the movie, I watched through the first season of the Ninjago TV show, to get an idea for the story, characters, etc. And although the director has said that the movie and the show are two separate universes, I will still be bringing up the TV show for comparison purposes. However, my thoughts on the show have no effect on my thoughts on the movie. I'm also going to be comparing this to the LEGO Batman movie because the two are pretty similar, being spin-offs, focusing on one singular theme, etc. There were also some problems I had with LEGO Batman that I forgot to bring up in my review that feel right to bring up here. With all that said, let's start off, much like last time, with the story. Dave Franco plays La Lloyd. It's Lloyd. Yeah, yeah, whatever. A typical 16-year-old living in Ninjago City with his mom, played by Olivia Munn. But when the city gets attacked by the evil warlord Garmadon, played by Justin Thoreau, Laloid transforms into the Green Ninja, the leader of the secret ninja force trained to fight Garmadon and his army of fish henchmen, consisting of Kai, Michael Pena, Cole, Fred Armisen, Jay, Camille Nanjiani, Nia, Abby Jacobson, and probably my favorite, Zane, Zach Woods. Zane, hey! Man, my mom is on my case all the time. She's all... And I'm like, lay off, mom. <laughs> I love that guy. But there's only one problem. Garmadon is Laloid's father. No! Yep. This doesn't sit well with Laloid. He's tired of his dad constantly trying to take over the city. He's tired of being mocked by his peers for being the son of an evil villain. And he's tired of his dad not being there for him. So one day, he tries to wipe out Garmadon for good by using the fabled ultimate weapon and in doing so, unleashes Meowthra, a six-toed tabby cat that goes on a rampage, destroying the city. So Laloid and his team must go on an adventure to unlock their elemental powers, defeat the monster, and rekindle the bond between him and his dad. This movie was always going to be a tougher sell for me personally, because unlike LEGO Batman, who on top of being an already established character both in his own universe and in the LEGO movie universe, but is also a well-known pop culture icon, these are new characters, all with backstories that I'm not aware of. So the story had to not only introduce these characters to a mainstream audience, but it also had to be interesting and engaging. And it did. Sort of. While the story is fun and engaging, and has much more heart than the LEGO Batman movie, it is very predictable. After the ninjas leave the city, you can pretty much guess where the movie is going. But thankfully, the relationships between the characters, the ones they spend time on anyway, are pretty well developed. As the bond grows between Laloid and Garmadon, and you hear why Garmadon hasn't been in Laloid's life, it's a pretty heart-wrenching moment. And at the end, when the two of them have their moment together, it's really sincere and sweet. There's also some live-action bits in the beginning and the end of the movie, starring Jackie Chan, who plays Master Wu in the movie, and some random kid. The only reason I can think of that these scenes are here is to confirm the theory that all of these LEGO worlds, Gotham, Ninjago, etc., are still backdrops of the real world just owned by different kids. But aside from that, you could cut them out of the movie completely and not much would change. But I digress. Outside of being pretty predictable, the story is still very fun and heartfelt and is honestly the best story you could do with this theme. 
Now let's talk about probably the most controversial aspect of the movie, the animation. More specifically, the background animation. The design of this movie is actually pretty cool. It kind of reminds me of Big Hero 6, two polar opposite architectural styles that mix surprisingly well. Same thing here. Mixing ancient Japanese with modern architecture and technology is really cool. It's colorful, intricate, and full of easter eggs and sight gags. It almost makes you wish you had a miniature version of this world to play around with and explore before you realize it costs $300, but I digress. The animation in this world is very cool. It has its own personality while still fitting into the LEGO universe. Being said, there is one glaring problem. Not everything is made out of LEGO. The water isn't LEGO, the sand isn't LEGO, the mountains aren't LEGO, the plants aren't LEGO. Pretty much the only things in this whole movie that are made of LEGO are the characters, the vehicles, the buildings, and small objects like insects. This is a problem that I had with the LEGO Batman movie, just on a much smaller scale. And yes, while it is a little annoying that in this LEGO movie, not everything is made out of LEGO, I can actually forgive it for two reasons. One, they tried much harder than the TV show. And yeah, I know, movie and TV budgets are different, particularly in animation, but come on! It can't be that hard to render tiny CGI bricks. Hell, the video game did a better job at this than you. And two, from a brick filmer's perspective, this design choice makes sense. Unless you're someone like Forest Fire 101, you're not going to have every single Lego piece for every single thing on screen. So you have to be creative and use whatever natural elements you can find. Rocks, twigs, clay, all that stuff. Hell, the Brotherhood Workshop guys do it all the time and it looks awesome. But anyway, the character animation is about the same quality we've come to expect. They still keep the same Lego textures and imperfections in the pieces, and of course, the frame rate is dropped to mimic stop motion. And as always, it looks great, particularly in the action scenes. Being a movie about ninjas, there's a lot of action, and it's beautiful to see. Seeing all these classic martial arts moves from several martial arts movies recreated in LEGO is pretty awesome. And apparently they actually brought in real stunt people for reference. So outside of the fact that not everything on screen is made of LEGO, the animation is just as good as we saw previously. Now let's talk about the characters, because there is a bit to talk about. This movie being a team movie is a bit of a double-edged sword. On the one hand, this story and the way it's presented doesn't require development for every member of this team. But at the same time, you want to know more about these characters, and the way they are treated makes them feel more like dead space and characters. Anyway, the characters they have are pretty okay. They're basically Lego mock-ups of the typical team dynamic. Kai is the goof-off, Jay is shy and insecure, Cole is strong and rebellious, Zane is the android trying to fit in, and Nia is... Batgirl. It's literally the only way I can describe her character is she's just Batgirl. Ninja Batgirl. So yeah, the side characters in this aren't the best and are mostly used for comic relief, but at least the actors do a good job with what little they have to do. Like I said, Zane is probably my favorite. What kind of shoes do ninjas wear? Sneakers! Laugh out loud! Laugh out loud! Laugh out loud! Laugh out loud! It's just a shame they weren't as prominent or interesting as they could have been. But like all the LEGO movies before it, the LEGO Ninjago movie is first and foremost a comedy, and the comedy is pretty damn good. Although I should mention that, if you've been watching the trailers for this movie, then you've probably seen some of the best jokes. But the good news is, the jokes they don't show in the trailer are pretty good. The LEGO style of comedy is what has stayed the most consistent throughout these films. There are a lot of fourth wall jokes, referential jokes, and a lot of easter eggs and sight gags. Much like the previous movies, you're going to be watching the background a lot because there are so many jokes in the background that you will probably miss the first time. They also have a few references to the TV show, including a very quick appearance by the TV show's theme song, Weekend Whip by The Fold. Yeah, that. The only problem with the comedy is that a lot of the jokes are repeated multiple times. For example, there's a scene at the beginning of the movie where Garmadon and Leloid are fighting and he wants to know why he keeps coming back to the city and Garmadon says, uh, it's because I lost something very important to me years ago, and you think he's gonna say his son, but instead he says something else. The problem is they do that same joke two more times, in the same scene. Come on, it was funny the first time, you don't need to overdo it. There's also a lot of rambly jokes in the movie, some of them work, some of them don't. I know I'm being pretty negative, but I still laughed a lot in this movie. So, 
So, after hearing all of this, what are my thoughts on the movie? Well, while it isn't a fraction as good as the Lego movie, I actually like this one over the Lego Batman movie. But, not by much. The Lego Ninjago movie is a fun, action-packed film with great animation, great comedy, and plenty of sincere family moments. It's not perfect, though. The story is predictable, the team characters are underdeveloped, and not everything is made out of Lego. But even with all those problems, the movie is still a lot of fun and doesn't deserve half the critical bashing it's getting on Rotten Tomatoes. If you're a fan of the TV show and you've enjoyed the previous Lego movies, or if you're like me and you need a fun animated film to wash the taste of the emoji movie out of your mouth, then this is definitely one to check out. I'm changing my rating of Lego Batman to an 8 and giving this one an 8.5 out of 10. Thank you guys so much for watching these LEGO Movie Reviews. This is something that I've never done before and I really wanted to try because I love talking about movies, particularly the LEGO Movies, so it really means a lot that you enjoy them. And hopefully I'll be back in 2019 with a review of the LEGO Movie sequel. Fingers crossed that'll be good. But anyway, if you want to check out my review of the LEGO Batman movie, click the box on the left. If you want to check out a LEGO Ninjago stop motion short that I made to tie into the LEGO Ninjago movie, click the box on the right. And to subscribe to my channel, click the little circle thingy in the middle of the screen. And don't forget to follow me on Instagram and Twitter to follow up with what I'm doing next. Thank you guys for watching, and I'll see you soon.